Hello, welcome to WebPixel Live. My name is Adam Handlin. I'm the editor of WebPixel, and I'm very proud to announce that um, as of a few weeks ago, um, ourselves and our friends at Dive Photo Guide announced the 2021 um, Dive Photo Guide WebPixel Masters Underworld Photography Competition, um, and it's open for entries now. Um, there's a few changes in the way we've run it for this year. Obviously, it's been a competition that's been around for a very long time, and I thought it would be good to highlight some of those. And I also thought, um, as the catchy title suggests, I'll give you some insight into what we're looking for in terms of entries and some ways that hopefully might help you select some of your pictures to enter into the contest and to give you the, yourselves the best chance, obviously, of doing well in it. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just a bit of a bit of an insight into the inside of the competition and how, how it's 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 uh, wired over the years we've been very fortunate to be supported by a, a large group of sponsors from within the underwater imaging and dive travel communities and um, they've done us proud over over the years that the competitions existed i think i think this is something like it's um 13th or 14th year um and um but as we're all aware the um, dive travel industry and in fact in, in the dive industry in general is in a terrible state um, given the state of the pandemic and um, obviously people aren't traveling as they used to um, so their revenues are down a lot of the areas that we travel to are, are also you know socially economically very depressed there's not a lot of money to go around and um, so it seemed like a very bad decision to reach out to these people and ask them for sponsorship in a in a year when to be honest um, or in a couple of years now where their their own incomes have been decimated and you know they're struggling to find money to pay the staff and hence you know the staff are uh, quite literally um you know um, struggling to to pay their bills and and, and in some cases uh, to buy food and all the all the stuff that we sort of take for granted as relatively privileged westerners so with that in mind, um, we decided to continue supporting our sponsors um, by um, linking them to the contest um, and showing our appreciation for their support um, by doing so. Um, but what we've done um, is rather than reach out to the sponsorship, we've basically used um, some of the money from the competition. We've reinvested it back into prizes. So the prizes are all coming um, from the competition entry fees. Um, and there are cash prizes. And uh, to be fair, that you know they're not the, the, the value of the prizes is significantly reduced. Um, but um, we're hoping certainly that um, the cash prizes are significant um, and that Obviously, it's an opportunity for underwater image makers to give back to those sponsors, still with the opportunity of winning a great prize, but also um, also obviously helping them out a bit in their time of need as well. Um, I should point out that, as is always the case, 15% of the entry fees is also donated to environmental charities, um, marine environmental charities, should I say, um, and that will continue to happen. There's no change in that. Um, and that's part of the part of what we do with this comp competition. So. Um, ourselves and our friends at Life Photo Guide um, ensure that that some of your entry fee is also going back into projects that obviously will, will benefit ultimately benefit all of us. So um, I think that's an important thing to point out too. So um, what makes this competition unique? Well, as having been involved in it quite intimately for for, for a long time um, and served as a judge on it and also uh, as an administrator for the competition, I think. Um, for me, what I'm looking for here is simply the best images that um, that are entered. Um, it's a very straightforward competition, and we deliberately keep things like the number of categories minimal. Um, and that's in many ways because I feel that in general, once we get into the sort of idea where, you know, we're talking about categories that are shot with a particular type of camera in a particular type of the ocean, particular part of the world, particular watercolour, particular whatever. Um, in many ways, that kind of detracts from the quality of the images that, we, that we're looking for. You know, I think ultimately that great images will always stand out. And that's that's certainly what we're looking for um, in terms of entries of the competition. So, you know, we I don't I, you know I don't think that um that there's anything wrong with what tools you use or where you shoot the image. And we've had winners in this, in, in, in this competition that have been shot in green water, been shot with compact cameras, been shot with SLRs, um, you know, and shot with everything else in between, shot in ambient light. Some of them have been very charismatic creatures. Some of them have been very mundane creatures shot in a very creative way. And everything in between. This is not about spending vast amounts of money on equipment or on travel. Um, it's about producing the best with what you've got. And certainly, obviously, at the moment, that that's pretty unique 
um, in terms of in terms of um, our, our, the situation we find ourselves in, work both of us aren't travelling as much as we have done in the past. So, um, so the entry categories. Just to return to that for a minute. Um, essentially, there are five categories. Um, uh, sorry, six categories. Um, and and th there are uh, in macro and wide angle. There are both traditional and unrestricted entry categories. Now, um, it's important, I think, to explain what those mean, because unfortunately, every year, some people misinterpret or misunderstand the rules um, and end up entering images into the wrong categories. And of course, unfortunately, once images are entered the wrong categories, they, they don't get judged. So, so really important that you get this right. Let's start off by defining what traditional means. So traditional means that you can do global color corrections. And I think the official phrase is brightness, contrast, color and sharpness only. And those are global corrections. So put that in practical terms. You can obviously enter your bring your um, image into Lightroom or Photoshop or the editor of your choice. Um, you can work on the sliders where you work in terms of the whole image. So you can open up the highlights on the whole image, or you can pull back the shadows or open up the shadows in the whole image, or the exposure, say specifically, brightness, contrast, color, sharpness only. That would also imply things like vibrance, overall global um, um, correction, certainly dehaze, um, clarity, all that kind of stuff. All of those are global corrections, and they would be acceptable. What is not acceptable in any of those categories is any time you pick up a brush tool, a, gradient, a graduated filter, or any other type of edit that affects only a part of the image. So you can't pick out the highlights and tone them down specifically, or um, for example, um, light up the subject by painting a, a correction onto the, onto the subject using a brush tool. You can't pull down the highlights in, in the surface by, um, by using a graduated filter. Um, and you can't use a radial filter to to open up the um, the, the subject um, and not the not the, the background of the image. So any selective tools are not allowed. And obviously those would apply as well in Photoshop, Camera Raw, again whatever whatever tool you're using. Um, you also obviously um, there is a limit. Um, the idea is that you shouldn't be cropping, so the images should be submitted at full size. Um, and the idea is that you know, this is a kind of quite a pure category um, where the the images reflect actually what was happening on the day in the ocean. Now, having said that, you know, you can use global white balance corrections. That's acceptable. You know, that's a color correction. So so absolutely. You know, so there is some um, leeway. And certainly, you know, I think I think the goal here is that we want to reward, we want to, we want to emphasize photographers that are really, really good technically, that have great technical skills that will enable them to get the very best out of subjects without using the software tools that are available. Um, and, and I think, you know, it's a quite unique category. It's quite old fashioned now, really, um, in the, in many ways. And I certainly subscribe to this. So most of my images have very minimal editing on, have, um, so most of my, forgive me, most of my images have edits on them. Um, and, you know, I think that's, that's part of what we do as photographers. My creative vision doesn't end when I press the shutter, but equally I get immense satisfaction from knowing that when I press the shutter, I've got a really great image. And um, I think this is really what we're trying to reward here is those images that we all have a few of them where we've pressed the shutter and thought that's really good and you look on the screen and you're back and you think yes I nailed it and that's really that feeling of yes I nailed it in the camera before you started doing anything with it um, is is a really great great feeling and I think it's one that you know makes a fairly unique category so just to refresh um, these um, we these are available so we have traditional categories in both macro and wide angle um, macro is basically any um, image that um, is uh, of one to one between one to ten and one to one um, aspect ratio or greater so obviously super macro would include in that um, and um, wide angle traditionally is, is anything that isn't <laughs> That isn't a, a macro image. Um, I think obviously there's some very grey here. It's close focus wide angle. I think it generally, if you've got a wide angle lens, it should be entered into the wide angle category in general. Um, and if you're using a macro lens, i.e. 30, 60, 100 and greater focal length, um, then those are probably the kind of lenses that would go into into the 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 macro category um, I appreciate it is somewhat gray and I think the judge would reflect judge would reflect that you know if you have an obvious wide angle wide angle image taken with a 
um, for example, conversion length, something like a, a Nottingham WACP, um, which may well be shot at focal lengths of 70 mil or whatever. Obviously, we look at the image on the image basis. It's not it's not um, it's not purely down to what lens you've got, because that would be uh, that would be overly simplistic. Just to stress anywhere in the world um, at any time, there's no cutoff. Um, it doesn't have to be stuff that's been shot in the past few years. The, there is a proviso, which I'll come to in a minute, about having one in, in, in competitions previously, but or have been placed in previous competitions, but otherwise um, it's pretty much open to, to everything else. Now in both the traditional categories, we will be auditing raw files. So um, please make sure that you're, when you're submitting those, that your um, entries, your entry JPEGs do represent what you see in the raw file, and um, albeit with global corrections, because we will be asking people to submit raw files when we shortlist for the finals. So so um, we don't want them up front, we don't want entry, we just want them when we shortlist for the finalists, then we'll reach out, and it'll probably be me, we'll reach out and solicit your raw images for that. So let's move on to the unrestricted categories and again there's macro and wide angle versions of this um, and essentially these are categories that allow um, they allow digital manipulation so so they would be images where um, you know you can remove scat backscatter you can potentially clone objects out um, I guess theoretically you could clone in, objects in if you really wanted to um, but obviously and um, bear in mind that we're not running a digital um, works we're not, not not running a digital um, imaging competition here so um sort of digital manipulation um, um contest here so uh, excessive edits would probably count against you in terms of the entry categories although they wouldn't be disqualified so so you know it's not a it's not it's certainly and certainly you know people you know entry creative imagery is is very welcomed um so Obviously, macro and wide angle, again, the focal length choices, the types of image are exactly the same as those that I've mentioned previously in the, the, the traditional categories, um, but you are allowed imaging. And we don't solicit raw files. So, um, so obviously, again, you know, we, we're comfortable with the fact that people are, are um, editing their images post, post capture, and that's what the category is for. Um, but obviously, I think, again, just to reiterate, I think if they're excessively um, edited and um, that can count against you in terms of judging um i think in general you know certainly cloning objects in cloning objects out outside of the kind of very artistic creations that um, are definitely digital art and um, probably would count against you certainly i think um adding or subtracting elements from a, a, a primarily natural history photo is probably something that would uh, for, for, but uh, a natural history image would probably something that would count against you in terms of judging. But you're very welcome to enter them, and certainly if you've got a standout image um, that is is it, that you've closed stuff in or, or um, you know crops stuff out, crops stuff out, you know that's fine. Yeah, I would suggest entering it, um, and it will be judged on its merits. Remember, the goal here isn't about so much the process or the camera or anything else. It's about you know standout imagery. So um, if you've got a great image and it's been manipulated, this is the place where it wants to be. Um, so fairly straightforward category. Um, we not we don't ask for raw or files to audit. So um, so yeah, we're comfortable with people um, capturing images in, in what, and editing images in whatever, whatever way they see fit. The the fifth still image category is a black and white category. Um, and again, this is very straightforward. Obviously, the black and white process, the conversion process, um, and essentially we're looking for a monochromatic image. So black and white sepia, um, any kind of any of those kinds of effects is fine, but we don't really want any colour in it per se. So so you couldn't, for example, use a selective colour where, where you black and white most of the frame and leave a coloured portion within it. Um, and obviously black and white in general, um, we're very comfortable high key, low key. There is some editing involved whenever you convert to black and white. Um, in general, there's no rules regarding editing. You are welcome to crop and clone as appropriate. Obviously backscatter removal, so on and so forth is fine. But again, to stress, you know, it's not a Photoshop competition. It is an underwater imaging competition. Um, images um, in black and white, um, typically, you know, detail, shape, form, as opposed to color are often, are often things to look for. Um, by all means, see some of Alex and my discussions on, on black and white and, uh, and uh, um, mono in, in on Webs for Life. We, we, we spoke about it quite a lot. So, um, again, um, you know, simply put, black black and white, I think, is a very nice pure art form. I think that's why we've included it as a separate category, um, because it reflects a very distinct um, visual image um, and is certainly one that we should celebrate, or often is, should be celebrated in terms of um, underwater imaging. 
we have a video category um, and this is soliciting basically um, five minute films, short films, um, out of which at least 50% of the of the um, film must be shot underwater. Um, and again, you know, these are this can be um, obviously all films edited and we're happy with soundtrack. We're happy with everything else being edited in. Um, as, as films are um, and the goal here again is to, is to capture you know unique quirky possibly um, amazing events give people the opportunity to showcase the very best in their footage um, you know there's no reason why it can't be a show real series of clips um, as long as there's a general theme drawing it together and, and again you know those of you who are out there shooting video will know it's all about the story it's not necessarily about the footage itself and um, it's about editing them together, putting it together into, into a, a narrative that, that is pleasing. And um, so again, you know, video entries, um, the, the entry process is slightly different for video. Uh, I would suggest going on the website and having a look and making sure that essentially though, we, we load the, the videos up onto Dropbox um, and obviously then we can view them from there. Obviously it's, it's a slightly different process to how we, we deal with images. Okay, so those are the categories. I think it's maybe worth just briefly kind of touching on some of the key rules um it's a couple of things um first of all obviously environmentally um it's really important for us that we are environmentally responsible when we're um when we're we're doing these competitions so um, please make sure the images reflect the best environmental practices um you know subject manipulation um or even images that might have been a result of subject manipulation will probably not tend not to do terribly well and um, so please make sure that your images reflect the very best to say interactions that you have with marine uh, creatures that are on the creatures terms not on your terms um and obviously um that these entries may not be disqualified, but I would imagine that the judges would be reticent about judging images that they or that they would um, or scoring images that they um, feel might be um, as a result of, of uh, subject manipulation. Um, the um, other kind of thing to point out is that the images must images that have won i'll give it the official one um, that have won been placed or listed as finalists in any major video contest announced before august 1 2021 um may not be submitted so obviously if you've done well in a previous competition with an image um, and the image results been announced prior to august 1 um, then um, those would not be allowed um if it's a single image that was part of portfolio of entries and the portfolio has done well the single image may be entered um, so important obviously um, there's no there's no um, kind of gray areas on this um, what's a major competition I think that would be something that would be subjective um, but I think one that has a, a garnered significant attention um, and that would be, would include things like via social media so on and so forth so you know if you if you placed in a major competition you've posted about on social media um, I think that's probably something that that would um, would mean that the image couldn't be entered into into the the, the masters um, okay um, in terms of video entries um, it's the same sort of thing notice we're not um, again restricting when people shot the images um, they can be it from any time um, and there's no in, there's no timeline restrictions. I think it's particularly relevant to say because people haven't been diving as much as possibly they have in the past. So it's probably worth um, mentioning that video entries they must be five minutes or less, um, and um, you know that's very very important. It's more than five minutes. Unfortunately, again, it won't be judged. So please make sure that you get your timelines um, absolutely five minutes or less. Um, so. The submission guidelines are on the website. Um, that's at underwatercompetition.com. It's underwatercompetition, all one word, dot com. Um, and if you go on there, you'll see that the, the contest is listed and, and um, the entry procedures are on there as well. I'll put a link into the show notes as well. So just to reiterate, I think the Wet Pixel Masters is a unique competition and over the years it's attracted some amazing entries from, from a wide variety of people. I love the fact that it isn't tied into any specific geographical region, watercolour, type of equipment. It's quite simply a collection of stunning images that have been shot by very, very, some of the most talented photographers that, that have um, been around over, over the past few years um, and you know and I'm really excited by the fact that, that that's 
that's the way we look at it. And um, I'm, I'm really glad that we don't try and pigeonhole them into specific categories and, and geographical locations and so on and so forth. So, um, so please dive into your photo libraries, find those images, find the ones that really um, you think are the ones that, that, that really excite you that make you take you back in the moment um, that you captured it and um, have a look at the category rules um, and please get them in, enter them into the competition. Um, the deadline for entries for this year is, um, good question, the deadline for entries for this year is the end of October, October the 31st, I guess at midnight. Um, so please obviously um, get your entries in by then. I know we all looped to the last minute, but um, please start, start thinking about it now. Um, and one last point on entries, and I, I meant to mention this earlier, but every year people enter images that have watermarks on them. Please do not leave your watermarks in place. If they're watermarked, we can't judge them because the whole idea behind judging is that we judge blind. We don't know whose images is whose. Um, for very good reason, obviously, that removes any kind of potential for, for any kind of claim that, that, that we favor a particular individual. So um, if the watermark's on there, unfortunately, automatically we know who shot it. So please make sure that when you're exporting these out, tick the box that says don't put the watermark on it or remove the watermark from it as appropriate. Right, sorry, that was a bit of an afterthought, but it's an important one, I think. Um, thanks very much again to our sponsors over the years. We really appreciate the support. Um, obviously, we hope that in years to come that you'll come back um, and we're in a better position to do so. And we hope that our support for this competition will help generate some publicity and help generate some, some ultimately generate some income for you. And once the world returns to normal, we can all travel again. Thank you very much. Thank you all for watching. Please check out the link in, in the show notes that talks about how we, uh, about the entries and, um, and where the entries can be submitted to. And I look forward very much to seeing those images on the competition. All right. Bye.